Hello and welcome to Studio 415. On today's show, you'll hear what Carol students think about the upcoming U.S. midterm elections. You'll gain some insight on the name and storyline of the upcoming fall play. And you'll see how several Carol students are trying to make a name for themselves through producing music. All that and more, coming up next. A lot of kids were scared we wouldn't have a fall play this year because no one was here, but we're making it happen. People won't talk to me because of my political views, and it's quite worrisome. Like if you're mad or something, skateboarding will probably help with that. Welcome to Studio 415. I'm Lennon Ormiston. And I'm Evan Schatz. With the midterm elections right around the corner, some CHS students have the opportunity to go out and vote for the best, the ones that best represent them, with a wide variety of views and platforms. In my story, I go over the implications of the midterms and met up with a registered voter and had the opportunity to hear their thoughts on what an election could bring. While the American populace votes for president every four years, they also get the opportunity to vote for Congress and governor every two years. This fall, all 435 House seats, one-third of the Senate, and a slew of governorships will be up for voting across the country. In Indiana, while Hoosiers will not have the opportunity to vote for governor, they will have a chance to vote for candidates like Indiana Congressman Jim Banks and Indiana Senator Todd Young. In terms of gaining the access to vote, according to the source IN.gov, voters must be American citizens aged 18 years or older, have a valid photo ID, and be living in their respective precincts 30 days before or after the general election. This process can be done at any local Bureau of Motor Vehicles or BMV locations. CHS senior Landon Trailer says the process of becoming a registered voter was an easy feat. I went right into uh, get my permit and right when I signed for my permit they said would you like to register to vote? I said absolutely and I signed right there and I am officially registered to vote. Voters can cast a ballot via in-person early or election day voting, absentee voting, or various other ways. Plus, citizens can visit a voting station based on the precinct they reside in. In NACS alone, some voting stations open to citizens include the Allen County Public Library's DuPont branch and a brand Fine Chocolates. Meanwhile, many CHS students have varying opinions on the condition of the country. According to a recent survey conducted by Studio 415, out of 359 responses, 36.5% believe that abortion slash Roe v. Wade is the biggest issue facing the nation, followed by the economy at 27%. Furthermore, when asked about the overall approval rating of President Joe Biden, a mere 17.3% of students approve of his job, far below the national average of 43.1% per sources like Real Clear Politics. Finally, when asked about the direction of the country, an overwhelming 68.8% of students believe the country is heading in the wrong direction. But some people look not just towards this fall, but long into the future like 2024. Trailer believes that people's lives being at stake is a reason why it is so important for people to get out and vote. We have the right to vote and we need to use that right to vote as it's going to affect our lives. Get involved, make your voice heard. Instead of like, act, you know, being an activist, obviously, you know, trying to persuade people, okay, that's fine. Use your exercise to vote. Early voting in Indiana will begin on October 11th and will run until the day before the election on November 7th, with election day being on November 8th. So if you're thinking about going to a polling station to vote, get registered, then get out there and make your voice heard. For Studio 415, I'm Evan Schatz. Every semester, Carol showcases a play for parents and students alike to enjoy. Their first play of the year will be D.W. Gregory's Radium Girls, a struggle for justice against a fierce corporation. Studio 415 reporter Cohen Sussdorf joins us in the studio and has the details of the play. Thanks. In my story, I went behind the scenes of the fall play Radium Girls to learn more about the story, the characters, and the new theater teacher. Carroll has a strong tradition of theatrical productions, with new plays hosted every year for the enjoyment of both parents and students. This season, alongside much-discussed musical Oklahoma, Carroll is also hosting playwright D.W. Gregory's Radium Girls. 
An historical fiction set in 1920s New Jersey, Radium Girls follows Grace Fryer, a young woman employed to paint dolls with glowing radium-infused paint. In the early 20th century, radium was a widely used substance whose radioactive properties were considered beneficial to the general public. It was observed to reduce tumors and believed to improve health and overall wellness. Despite this, Fry and the other women at the plant began to succumb to what eventually was discovered to be radiation poisoning, inciting a number of illnesses. The play is, foremost, a legal drama as the women struggle to be heard past a corporate deflection and public complacency. Recent addition to the theater department, Emily Grillo directs the upcoming production, shouldering the weight of this production against the musical. Grillo highlights how the play's tones contrast so heavily. Oh, it's impossible. It's two totally different things. Oklahoma is a musical with singing and dancing and happiness and and this is just a play so no singing and dancing and not a lot of happiness but <laughs> they're both good in their own way but they're completely completely different the two genres running alongside each other demonstrate the versatility of both carol actors and their directors this year's production has a colorful cast consisting of over 30 students filling roles typically billed for nine or ten people Senior Jacqueline Chabican, who plays a customer, respects Grillo's unique in the fray directing style and believes her involvement will benefit the final product. She's a bit more forward with it. With uh, previous years and with Mr. Pearson before he left us, he gave a lot of um, freedom to the students to make decisions and she's a bit more hands-on with the production, which honestly is kind of a breath, a breath of fresh air since sometimes there would be ideas that would get past that weren't that great of ideas. In experience with the school and its population, Grillo's initial trepidation about Carol's interest in the play was soothed by a high turnout during auditions. I was really nervous to have auditions for this play because I didn't know anyone, um, and so I was afraid no one would come. But uh, actually, almost 50 people came. Chabican also assures those interested in auditioning for future productions that the Carroll Theater community is open and ready to embrace newcomers. The theater community here at Carroll is amazing. They're eccentric, they're loud, but overall a very welcoming community. And honestly, you won't get to, if you don't just go for it and try out, you will never know. The Ram Girl showing is scheduled for Tuesday, October 11th and Wednesday, October 12th, with curtains both nights at 7 p.m. The cast and the directors are very optimistic and think the play will go very well. For Studio 415, I'm Cohen Sestorf. Music is a common interest among CHS students. Many students listen to music whenever given a free chance. Despite this, not everyone can compose their own music. Studio 415 reporter Corbin Kimberly highlights three CHS students creating their own sound. As of 2021, 6,000 songs are uploaded to Spotify a day. That's a new song every 1.4 seconds. With this influx of songs, many unknown artists are being found every day, including within Carroll High School. One such artist is Chandler Jones. Jones grew up in a family surrounded by music. Around his sixth grade year, he began experimenting and DJing. Jones has been producing his own music for around six years and writing his own music for about three years. Jones has experimented in many genres of music but found his niche in rap. Jones has found success in music, having played in concerts in the past. One of his favorite songs he has made is Going Far, due to the more professional sound and a higher level of mastery over his music. Yeah, I feel so hard, it was a shot in the dark We were staying up from the start, now look where we are I messed up, I broke your heart, didn't think we'd get this far Jones says when creating his music, he will sit down and make an instrumental. If the results are good, but not to Jones' sound, he will sell the beat to another artist. If the instrumentals are to Jones' standards, he will begin writing lyrics and recording a demo. Song recorded, normally I delete all of the recordings and then go back and do a bunch of takes until I get it to sound the way I want to. Once the track has been clean, Jones then will remove any unwanted background noise and add voice effects. From there, Jones exports and tests the songs over speakers. Jones produces some of his music at his in-home studio, but he also takes advantage of his music technology internship at St. Francis by using their facilities. Cody Slusser, on the other hand, primarily uses his in-home studio to produce music. Slusser began creating music due to his love on the beats underneath rappers such as Nardo Wick and Lil Baby. Slusser associates his music with the hip-hop subgenre, Trap, although he will occasionally produce R&B instrumentals as well. Slusser posts his music on YouTube under the name Toadie Gravy. One of Slusser's songs, a trap remix of Barney's theme song, has 14,000 views.
With success fresh in Sluster's mind, Sluster said he would like to make a career with his music. Trey Skipfer is another cure musician who aims to make a career with his music. Kipfer is currently applying to college for his music in order to take his production to the next level. Kipfer is familiar with production software such as FL Studio, but would like to learn how to use Logic, a more professional music software. Kipfer produces his own music in a shed in his backyard that he has renovated into his own recording studio. Kipfer primarily creates hip-hop and rap music. In order to produce his beats, Kipfer starts with a small part that becomes its own song. I'll usually start out playing an instrument or finding a little melody or sample and then I'll just build off of that, adding drums, adding different instruments and vocals, so on. Music is a strong passion for many in the Carroll community. From a studio to a shed, anyone can make music. All it takes is time, creativity, and a little bit of dedication. For Studio 415, I'm Corbin Kimberly. Peacocks, Dippin' Dots, and Log Rides, all are characteristics that make up the Fort Wayne Children's Zoo. However, behind all those factors, many CHS students volunteer who help to make the zoo such a unique location. In my story, I take a look into what these volunteers do and how they contribute to a place they are so passionate about. With 425 active volunteers, the Fort Wayne Children's Zoo is working hard to ensure that the animals' needs are met and guests are satisfied. At the start of each year, the zoo invites students from around Fort Wayne to participate in its Teams for Nature volunteering program. These volunteers help in a variety of ways that make the zoo such a unique environment. Students from 7th to 12th grade can apply for a variety of positions at the zoo. As a team counselor, students assist at the annual Kids for Nature summer camp. Teen zookeepers get the opportunity to shadow keepers as they perform their daily tasks. Members of the zoo crew make connections with guests through sharing interesting information. Finally, the conservation crew helps promote conservation awareness by creating projects that both benefit the environment and inform guests. Third-year volunteer Logan Forbing believes connecting his role to the main goal of the zoo benefits both the animals and guests. I worked in the zoo with guests. I was um, practically what we call zoo crew. So I walked around with educational boards, games, um, different activities for guests and kids to do because our main mission here at the zoo is to connect animals and guests. So that's our mission and um, through the games and uh, educational boards, we just kind of try to educate everyone on that. Although these volunteers have tasks around the zoo, an equally important job of these students is to connect with guests. Minister of Volunteers Kathy Terlizzi worked with other members of the leadership team to implement a clicker counter system that tracks guest interactions throughout the day. Terlizzi says that this is a tangible way to highlight the influence that these volunteers can have on their community. Which to them brings home what an impact they can have if they just leave a little conservation message with all of those people and share a little tidbit of knowledge in a fun way um, and enhance the guest experience. Again, that brings that mission full circle. Terlizzi also believes that volunteers find personal benefit from these interactions. What I hear from the volunteers when I ask them, um, they want to give back to their community and everybody loves the zoo. Uh, their passion for the animals and for um, helping support a, an organization that they believe in. The Fort Wayne Children's Zoo hopes to keep its program expanding in the near future. Through a simple online process, zoo leaders help to match teen volunteers where their talents are most needed. Applications for next summer's Teens for Nature program will open online on January 1st, 2023. If accepted, students commit to working Monday through Friday during a two-week period over the summer. CHS senior Lindsay Franklin says that trying out the volunteer program was extremely rewarding. I'd say if you're thinking about it and you want to do it, go ahead and try it. It's fun. You meet new people from all over Fort Wayne, even cities outside of Fort Wayne. You get to work with animals, the kids. It's just overall a really good experience and character builder. The zoo's 2022 season will be coming to an end this October. However, if you're still interested in volunteering, call 260-427-6828 or email them through volunteer at kidszoo.org. Also, make sure to visit your favorite animals before the season ends. For Studio 415, I'm Lennon Ormiston. With many new clubs appearing on the roster, it can be hard to choose between them all. Studio 415 reporter Ryan Paschke brings you the story about a new student from Louisiana settling down here at Carroll by starting a new skate club. Thanks guys. In my story, I got to see what all goes into starting a new club here at Carroll, as well as learning about the skateboarding community and the people involved. Whether it's a hobby to kill time or a method to pick up women, skateboarding has been a teenage passion for decades. It developed in the 1960s on the coast of California, originally named sidewalk surfing. When tides were too high, surfers would practice their balance on a board with wheels. To this day, skateboarding is one of the most popular sports in the world, officially becoming an Olympic sport in 2020. 
Even with about 70,000 injuries per year, this multi-billion dollar industry continues to thrive in 2022. Carroll Skate Club leader Shay Trahan just moved to Fort Wayne a couple months ago from a town named Bush, Louisiana. Despite their new surroundings, Trahan has already met an assortment of captivating people with common interests. To bring these students together, Trahan started the skate club at the beginning of the school year. Trahan created an Instagram account and began spreading the word on their story to promote the club. You can follow the account at Carroll Skate Club for frequent updates on meetups, t-shirts, and other important club information. Even with the popularity of the sport, it can still be difficult finding areas for skateboarding. Trahan recalls their first memories of skating back home in Louisiana. So in Louisiana, there wasn't a whole lot of places to skate because it rained a lot, so there was like mud everywhere. Um, and I lived about two hours away from the nearest like good skate park. So I drug a piece of plywood out of my grandpa's shed and I skated on that. The club plans to meet on Saturdays before noon at various skating areas around the state. Trahan aims to pick up trash around skate parks to boost Fort Wayne's reputation and improve the skating environment. We're going to try to meet consistently at parks uh, and keep keep the park clean. The due is only $10 for a custom designed t-shirt that will be tie-dyed at one of the meets for a unique touch. Club member Alex Dean shares his passion for skating and encourages anyone to start this hobby regardless of skill level or experience. Definitely try skateboarding. Um, I didn't know whether skateboarding was for me or not until I gave it a good try, um, but now I definitely love it. I love skateboarding. If you're interested in joining the Carroll Skate Club, contact Kyle Wood in room 217 or use the link under the club sign-up sheet. For Studio 415, I'm Ryan Pashi. That's all we have for today. Thanks for watching. If there's a story you would like us to cover, please let us know. For all of us here at Studio 415, have a great week, Carol.